Welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and uh, hybrid electrical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the, how much is the distance travelled by the vehicle on the plane road. That is the velocity and acceleration. Velocity and acceleration. The energy required at, at a propulsion unit is highly depending upon how much acceleration is required for the electric vehicle to move on the road against the road force. The maximum acceleration is also limited by the maximum practical force available at the propulsion unit. It is also depending upon the road condition also. But in the real world, the load force is the unknown parameter. So before going to design in the electrical vehicle, we should ensure all the conditions based upon that. We have to design how much power is required by the propulsion unit to move the vehicle. Vehicles are typically designed with a certain objective such as a maximum acceleration on a given road slope with a typical weather condition. Here there are two cases we are analyzing the electric vehicle. In each case we are going to find out how much distance we travel, how much time is taken by the electric vehicle. The first thing is the normal road condition. Level road and constant SPM, nothing but constant factor force developed by the propulsion unit. See here we are going to consider the two cases. First is the, is the time of initial condition, second one is the C is greater than the zero. Nothing but the opposite condition. At initial condition, the gravitational force and road force which is acting on the vehicle both are can, get cancelled. This is a constant factor force which is developed by the propulsion unit on the vehicle. This is a rolling friction force. There is no air friction because at the time of starting, there is no air is there. When the vehicle is moving, a drag force will be acting in this direction, the rolling friction will be acting in this direction because it is a plane road. So again, the, the two forces get cancelled. Some of these two forces should be overcome by the tractor force which is developed by the propulsion unit in an electric vehicle. The level road implies that the gradient is zero. Initially, we are assuming that EV initial at rest which implies that the velocity of the vehicle is zero. This is the free body diagram at each point is zero. This is the, what are the forces which is acting on the vehicle in traveling on the plane road. Assume that initial factor force is zero. So, the FPR should be greater than the C0 mg. So, the initial factor force can be able to overcome this one. Sigma F of zero equal to m into A of zero. This is equal to m into D V of zero by so FPR minus C0 mg. This is equal to m into dv of 0 by dt, this should be greater than the this one. We know that FPR of 0 is greater than the C0 M0, so this should be greater than the 0, then the velocity will be increased. Once the vehicle starts moving, the force acting on it will be changes and the T is greater than the 0. Or sigma F equal to M into dv by dt, here the net force which are acting on the vehicle Nothing but FPR minus FPAD minus F roll, which is equal to M into dv by dt. Already we know the expression for the A drag force and also rolling force is to substitute all these values. So finally we are getting this expression. If we solve the above equation for the T greater than the 0, V of T also greater than the 0, we are getting this expression that is the dv by dt equal to FPR by M minus G into C naught minus O by 2M CD AF plus G C1 into let me define the some constant. Here this value we have taken the constant k1, which is greater than the zero. Again, we have taken this is as the one more constant that is also kg that is also greater than zero. So dv by dt we can write this as the k1 minus k2. This is the velocity profile of the vehicle. V of t we have taken the y-axis and the v we have taken the x-axis for the constant in factor four. Next velocity profile. The velocity profile of the constant f t r level road can be obtained. By solving the V from the above equation dv by dt equation, which gives the V of t equal to root k1 by k2 can h of root k1 k2 into t. The terminal velocity can be obtained by taking the limits of the velocity profile by taking the t equal to infinity. So we are getting the V of limit t plus 2 infinity. In the above equation, we are getting the root root k1 by k2 that we imply t equal to root k1 k2 equal to k2 into t. This is the final velocity, this is the time required to reach the final velocity. Distance transferred or traveled by the vehicle 
can be obtained the following relation ds of t by dt is equal to v of q this is equal to vt tan h of k2 into v2 into t the distance is function of a time if you take the integration of both sides you can find the distance traveled by the vehicle that is equal to 1 by k2 into natural logarithm of cos h of vt into t the starting acceleration is often is specified as a 0 to vf Mere per second in Vf second, where Vf is the desired velocity at the end of the specified time Vf second. The time reached to desired velocity is given by the Vf equal to one by k two v v t into cos h inverse of e to the power of k two s. The distance travelled during the time to reach the desired velocity is given by the s f equal to one by k two into natural logarithm of Cos h of k two v t into t. The desired time can also be expressed as a Vf equal to one by k root of k one k two into ten h inverse of k root of k two by k one v f. Where v f is nothing but the velocity of the car v f taken. Suppose if you want to find how much time is taken by the vehicle to reach the ninety eight percent of the thermal velocity, in the above equation if you take the 90 percent of thermal velocity. Then we are getting the T V T equal to one by k root of k one k two tan h inverse of zero point nine eight V T by V T. V T V T gets cancelled. Finally, if you simplify this one, two point three by k root of k one into k two or T V T equal to two point three by k two into V T. Tractive force. The initial velocity tractive force delivered by the propulsion unit that is equal to P T R of T equal to F. Yeah, which is yeah. FTR is another type of force where V of T is another type of velocity of the vehicle. Already we know the expression for the V of T that you have to substitute this expression we are getting the the power delivered by the propulsion unit you know, that is equal to FTR V T cam H of K to V T into T. Now in place of V T we are substituting the value so P T R of T equal to FTR into V T cam H of root K one K two into T. This is nothing but a this value that is nothing but a theta. A thermal power can be expressed as theta is equal to F T R into the tractive power required to reach the desired velocity V F over the acceleration in interval delta T equal to P T R of P K equal to P T into tan H of root K one K two into T F. Nothing but this expression will take the value in place of T R to take the theta. The mean tractive force over the acceleration on interval delta T. I will integrate this expression is from zero to T F. The length becomes a T F. So one by T F integral of zero to T F T T R of T into D T. So finally, we are getting the value one by root K one K T into natural logarithm of cos H of root K one K two into T F. So the energy required for a given acceleration and constant steady state velocity. Is necessary for the design and the collection of energy stored or battery to cover the certain amount of this. So here, why we are going to calculate the energy required means for the selection of the battery. The rate of change of energy is the tractive power is given as P T R of T equal to rate of change of energy. Where E T R is nothing but a instantaneous tractive energy. The energy required or energy change during the interval of the vehicle can be obtained. From the integration of the instantaneous power equation. So now you take the both sides of the integration. We are getting the integral e t r of zero to integral e t r of t f. This is equal to d e t r. That is equal to t equal to zero to t equal to t f t t r into d t. So the change in energy that is equal to t f into average value of the tractive force. In this manner, we can find out the how much distance. Travelled by the vehicle in the plane road, as well as the power required. How much time is taken by the vehicle to reach the desired velocity? Also, acceleration also we have calculated, and also we calculate the how much power is required by the propulsion unit so that we can easily design the battery support for that. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly, or you can ask me in the comment box on my YouTube channel, so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.